are you? Very good. Third of February. Pinch and a punch. Yep. For, well, not the first of the month, but well, you know. First, really? the first, first time health, I've seen you guys. Yeah, first health segment of the month. Yeah, here <laughs> we are, here we are. So this week I'm doing a special two-parter all about mm. diabetes, which is going to be quite informative. So you can uh, learn something on your way to work or school or if you're just in the house just now. So let's get exactly to it. Um, what Do you know what diabetes is, what it means? Well... Oh, now I've, we've had a lot of diabetes experts coming into the studio, lots of genetics and people yes. are studying it. So I've heard a lot about diabetes, okay, to okay. be honest. Um, and maybe some of you out there have as well. Um, I think from what I have gathered is people get confused with the two types of it. Yeah. I'll just give you a rundown. So diabetes is obviously a condition where basically the amount of glucose, which is sugar, in your blood is too high because the body cannot use it properly. So that's basically what it comes down to. And this is because our pancreas, it doesn't produce any or enough insulin to help regulate the blood sugar. Or when it is producing it, it doesn't work properly. Okay? So there's two differences here. So I'll just give you a little rundown. Insulin is a hormone that's produced by our pancreas. Our pancreas is actually a vital organ. You cannot live without a pancreas. Mm. So it secretes insulin into your body, which regulates... Basically, when you eat something... The minute you eat something, it turns to saliva, your pancreas engages and it secretes insulin, releases insulin. So if your body's not doing that, then of course you've got a problem, haven't you? So this is where diabetes comes in. So glucose, you know, enters the body's cells and we could get really scientific, like you said, but Mm. let's not, let's try and keep it quite basic. Um, There's two types of diabetes, type one and type two. So type one diabetic is when there is no insulin being produced. Okay, so your pancreas is not releasing insulin. Therefore, you inject insulin into yourself. Type 2 diabetes is there is either not enough or the insulin is there but doesn't work properly. Mm. So they normally don't normally inject themselves with insulin. The two clear differences between these, I'm going to explain them both individually, but the two clear differences are a type 1 diabetic is normally born that way and will find as they become maybe a teenager a child or a teenager that they develop it yeah and the symptoms and i'll I'll get to it they come on quite quickly a type 2 diabetic can happen any time in your life and is normally related to a bad or poor diet and lifestyle practice normally all right i don't want to insult anyone but that's normally what it would come down to so there's just two clear differences Mm. so type 1 diabetes accounts for around 10 percent of adults with diabetes do you see the difference? Yeah. 10% yeah. versus 90%. Yes, yeah. yeah, so it's quite a difference. So you won't often know of someone who's a, di- a type 1. If someone's a diabetic, they're probably type 2. Yeah, and so, I wonder one, di- one type 1. Oh, you do? I okay. do, yeah. I found out, like you said, in his teenage years, yeah. and quite scarily, actually. Unfortunately, not to scare anybody, but yeah, yeah I'm sure we'll get into that. But uh, as you say, generally, it's, it is, it's it is. I mean, lifestyle related. The symptoms of, well, I'll, I'll tell you that a type 1 diabetic, it can develop at any age, but it's pretty much normally before the age of 40 anyway, and especially prevalent in childhood. Mm. Um, so it's the most common type of diabetes found in children. Um, and you can inherit it, but most people you don't really inherit it you know it's just there so the symptoms of a type 1 diabetic person it can come on very quickly like you said it can almost be frightening and um, it can happen over a few days two weeks and it's caused by a blood sugar level just raising and cannot return back to normal so that is called hyperglycemia so it's when it's just going up and up and up and it cannot be controlled because there's no insulin yeah. to control it, to bring it back down. So an example of some symptoms would be passing urine more often than usual, especially in the night, increased thirst, extreme tiredness, unexplained weight loss, general itching, slow healing of cuts and wounds and blurred vision. Mm. So all of these symptoms can cause, can be, you know, type 1 diabetes. So the the good thing is about this, as soon as you're sort of diagnosed with it, it's going to go away. Your symptoms are, are um, treated quite quickly. So normally for type 1 diabetic, they're given insulin. So they would inject their own insulin. Because like I said, insulin is a hormone that we have naturally in our body that is secreted by that pancreas. And if you don't have that, then you're going to have to put it in there, just like taking a pill. But it's actually insulin. And, and you may well be aware that type 1 diabetics, they have to regularly prick for finger te- prick their fingers for blood tests to see mm. their levels of blood sugar is it a good idea for them to wear like a, a id badge that says you're a diabetic people have mixed ideas about if someone's diabetic what will quick give them sugar yeah. sometimes it yeah. depends on not a type 2 you wouldn't yeah. do that to a type 2 diabetic so it mm. depends on what it is so 
that's basically what a type one diabetic is and, and i'm afraid it cannot be prevented it's something that you are born with so it cannot be prevented but it can be managed okay yeah. so type two is a little bit more complex so a type two diabetic like i said this can develop at any time in your life as the 26 million americans with diabetes 90 to 96 <laughs> percent have type two right so you're getting an idea here of that side of it so often I think when you see big billboards, especially in this country, talking about diabetes, you can probably guess we're talking about the type 2 here, yeah. Mm. So type 2 diabetes is uh, largely on the rise, especially in the Gulf. Um, the World Health Organization and the International Diabetes Federation have called diabetes the 21st century's leading healthcare challenge. Mm. So diabetes complications and mortality create social and economic challenges that affect individuals, families, businesses, and the society as a whole. So in the MENA region, the Middle East, North Africa, which is Bahrain, Egypt, Kuwait, Oman, Saudi Arabia, and UAE, these are among the world's 10 highest for prevalence of diabetes. So those countries alone, six of them, six of those countries are in the top 10, okay? Yeah. Along with probably America and Britain, I would imagine. So this is really, you know, quite a serious issue. And by 2020... There's an estimation that 32% of the adult UAA population will have type 2 diabetes. Mm. Okay, if this continues, by 2030, the number of people with diabetes will double, reaching 59.7 million people in the world. It's nearly That's... 60 million people, so it's quite So it's the population of the UK. Yeah, it's quite frightening, actually. But, you know, something to remember about this is that if you do have type 2, or some of us don't know that we have it as well, it's another point... Um, simple lifestyle changes can prevent this. Now, today's show, I'm just giving you the facts about both di types of diabetes and all of that. On Wednesday, I'm going to talk about assessing your risk factors to find out, do I have it? Because a lot of people don't realise they've got diabetes, mm. type 2. Mm. They're unaware of it. And it's a good thing to get checked out now and get to know if you do have it or not. Uh, there's also a pre diabetes test as well to see if you're gonna get it you know if you're likely to get it so we'll talk about all of that on wednesday but for today we're just talking about the facts so something here that's been happening in qatar as well cornell um have been doing a diabetes project mm -hmm. so this diabetes project is basically an in-depth study of the impact of diabetes on healthcare delivery in the state of qatar so it evaluates risk factors and treatment patterns and outcomes for people who are affected by the disease so it's a really good project that um examines the impact that diabetes is going to have at the moment and in the future in Qatar. And the study includes the public health faculty from Weill Cornell, um, both in New York and Qatar. So they've worked with colleagues at Hamid as well um, to especially work on this. It's a real it's a real turn around here that people are now really seeing that this is a big problem and they're doing something about it. They're putting a project in hand to tackle this and try and come up with how to live with it, what you can do to change it. So because of the unique characteristics of the Qatari people, this project offers exciting possibilities for discovering useful information about diabetes. So it's, it's really quite quite an interesting um, project that they're doing. Today, the prevalence of diabetes in Qatar is about twice of that in the United States. Mm. So just think about that as a number, okay? So, you know, so there are a lot of things happening here. And you'll see, especially coming up to sports day, there's going to be a lot of... Oh, there always has been promotions to get people to move and to exercise and have a healthy life. But diabetes does come into that as well. And it's basically to raise awareness of it. So, you know, for those who have type 1 out there, they know how to, to manage it. And for those who have type 2, there are a lot of places that you can go to for help. There's a great website, diabetes.org.uk. They have a lot of information. There's lots of websites. Um, and it's all about managing it. And type 2, it can be reversible through a healthy lifestyle. So on Wednesday, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. So, um, yeah, give us a, a text or a message tweet anything if you want to share your story if you maybe are diabetic um just anything we'd love to hear from you yep 9126 and at qf radio 2 on twitter and there is of course a diabetes association here you do see them out and about sometimes in malls and things yes, like that exactly um, but they're obviously very approachable and and part of their service is to be there for people who, who have got diabetes that's right so, and they're the go-to for all of the information today's just a little a little general synopsis of what mm. both of these types of diabetes are so it can give you a bit more understanding on it i'm certainly not an expert on diabetes so you would go to them for any information well, we'll catch you again on Wednesday. Yeah. We will look a little bit more at the subject in um, yeah. how to prevent and exercise yeah, and diet exercise, and all those types of stuff. All of that kind of stuff. Uh, so we'll look forward to that on Wednesday. Great. I'll see you guys then. Have a good week. Bye.